Hello, and welcome to today's live broadcast. Today, we are going to be talking about what is breaking a fast. And I want to preface today's discussion with a little bit of information about this community. So today's topic is going to be about what breaks a fast for our specific community of women. So aging women. And let me define to you what aging woman means. An aging woman who is someone who is currently suffering from the inability to lose weight, is unhappy with the body fat that's hormonally accumulating on her body, a woman who is suffering from a lot of the aging type of signs and signals such as insomnia, night sweats, hot flashes, memory loss, all of the things that really start to creep in for us women as we start going through the later in life hormonal changes. And so what I'm going to talk about today is specific to this community. And it is based off of four plus years of real life data from aging women who are practicing intermittent fasting the way I'm going to describe today. So if you are a woman who's not suffering from any of the things I just referenced, or maybe you're finding results doing intermittent fasting a different way, please keep in mind that this information is not specific to you. It is specific to the woman who is currently frustrated and is not finding the results that she might be hoping for with the way that intermittent fasting is generally explained to the public. So welcome. If you're joining us for the first time, I always ask that you please take a second to hit that subscribe button and make sure that you hit that little bell notification. That way you'll know when we go live or upload new content. If you are an aging woman who has graduated from our intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course, please make sure you leave a comment in that comment section so that the women who might be joining us for the first time, or maybe there's some women in our audience who will be catching this on the rebroadcast who are feeling frustrated and don't understand why it is they're not getting the results they think they should be getting, you can go ahead and reinforce what it is we're saying here today, because again, I'm going off of the factual information that we have from the women who are practicing intermittent fasting the way I'm talking about it today. So I am an aging woman. Five years ago, I was suffering from all of the things that a lot of us women are suffering from when we are going through this aging process. When we suddenly cannot lose weight, when we suddenly are unhappy with all of this visual body fat that starts accumulating our, on our body because of hormonal changes. Maybe you just got a diagnosis from your doctor saying that you have some sugar-related diseases going on in your body, um, insulin resistance. Maybe you have a pre-diabetic or diabetic um, condition that was just um, given to you uh, from your doctor because of a, an annual physical that you went through. Or maybe even you were like me and you were suffering from a lot of the cognitive decline that happens when our body is so backed up and our brain starts to become affected by all of that sugar that we have been putting in our body over the years. And when I say sugar, I don't literally mean table sugar. I mean the sugar in the chemical form in which it's produced and stored and is backing up our body. So when I say sugar, I want you to think about the chemical change that happens to unused calories or unused energy or insulin that is being produced in a way that is no longer normal for your body and it is being packaged away in your body and causing you all these problems. So what breaks a fast? For this community of women, for women who are suffering all of those things that I just referenced, I want you to assume that everything will break your fast. If you are listening to the general advice that's given on the internet or in a lot of social forums about what you can and cannot do with intermittent fasting, and you're practicing the things that are causing you um, that or, or giving you that feeling like, oh, I can do this or I can do that or I can do this because so and so said so, and you're still not happy with the results that you're getting with intermittent fasting, it is because those things that they are saying you are allowed to put in your fast are not working for you. You, if you're suffering from or unhappy with how your body is in its current state as an aging woman, then you have to assume if you are practicing intermittent fasting and you're still putting lemon in your water, 
putting apple cider vinegar in your water, putting cream in your coffee, using stevia several times a day, um, uh, not fasting for a long enough period of time, then you are not taking advantage of the amazing power of what intermittent fasting for today's aging woman can provide for you. It is a completely different set of rules for us because of the fact that our body is not working correctly anymore. If you're taking advice from a 30 year old man who's a bodybuilder and you try to fast the way that person is fasting, you will not be happy with the results and you will prolong your misery and you will add to it. Because not only are you not going to get the results that you were hoping for, but you're going to be living in this feeling of hunger and that doesn't feel good. You're going to be feeling living in this feeling of panic because your body's not going to be able to adjust to the changes that you're making because they're not the right changes for you. You're going to be living in a state of frustration and you're going to go into these situations panicking and say, can I, can I, can I? If you are still in a situation of or, or phase of your research, when you lead with the question of can I, then the things that you're doing are probably problematic for you. In an intermittent fasting state, when you're trying to reverse the signs and signals of hormonal changes or inability to lose fat or inability to lose weight, you have to assume that everything is going to break your fast because your body is probably in either a hypoglycemic state or an insulin resistant state or you're diabetic or your body is just so backed up that you'll never get to a point where your body can ban balance itself out hormonally, specifically your hunger hormones and insulin. Your hunger hormones are going to be the thing that keep you in a mental and an emotional state of panic. Because when your hunger hormones are not balanced out, it doesn't feel good to be hungry. When it doesn't feel good to be hungry, you want someone to tell you when you ask the question, can I have lemon in my water? You want them to tell you, yes, you can, because putting lemon in your water is going to ease the pain of hunger in the short term. But in the long term, it's going to hold you in a state of imbalance. You're going to want someone to answer the question, can I have creamer in my coffee with a yes? Because putting creamer in your coffee is going to make you feel good in the short term, but in the long term, it's not going to yield you the results that you want. If you're asking the question, can I have stevia during my fast? I promise you, you are living in a state of total discomfort in your fasted state and your feasting is going to become more difficult for you because that stevia is going to keep you in that sugar craving type of atmosphere in your body chemistry and you are going to crave sweets in your feast and you're probably going to also be listening to the advice of if you fast you can eat whatever you want and you're going to keep deferring to the things that are satisfying your palate as opposed to balancing out your hormones. So for today's aging woman, if you are unhappy with the state that your body is in as you're going through these hormonal changes through perimenopause and menopause, I beg of you to please trust me in this. We have had thousands and thousands and thousands of women over the past four years coming into this environment, coming into this community, graduating from the course that we offer, who start out in a state of misery and end in a state of comfort and a state of victory because they finally broken the curse. They're seeing weight loss changes. They're seeing body fat changes. They are seeing a reduction in sugar cravings. They are seeing a reduction in the loss of their cognitive abilities and they're, they're having those cognitive abilities coming back. And it's a so a short three week time frame of just trusting what works for us as aging women. We do have to live by a different set of rules. Fortunately, those rules totally work in our favor. But it's scary to think about fasting for a really long period of time when just going four or five hours feels uncomfortable without food. 
but you have to understand that chemistry that's going on in your body. When your body is not insulin sensitive, everything breaks a fast. Stevia, apple cider vinegar, cream in your coffee, MCT oil. Uh, for some people, it's coffee in general that might be breaking your fast because your body is so hyper responsive to everything that you put into it. You have to trust that resetting your hormones comes in a state of your body not having any sort of insulin response. Remember, it takes a certain number of hours to burn off what you just put back into your body during a feast. So it takes time to feast off your last meal. If you are having any interruptions in that fasted state because of stevia or apple cider vinegar or cream in your coffee, you will never get to that place where you're balancing out your hunger hormones and resetting your insulin response to slight little things like stevia in your coffee. Now there's going to come a point where you can start to add those things back in, but you have to make sure your body is healed first. So how can you tell that your body is healed and you can start experimenting with some things in your fast? When you wake up every day feeling like you are looking and feeling your best, when you're no longer preoccupied about all the things that are going on in your life and your body that you're no longer happy with, when you start sleeping through the night, when you uh, stop having hot flashes, when all of those things balance out, and yes, intermittent fasting, the way we teach it here in this community, can do all of those things for you when you trust the fast. You cannot interrupt that window that you're deciding to fast with something that's going to make you feel good in the short term. Trust me, once you get past that initial couple of days of angst, and once you start to trust that your body is intelligent enough to take care of itself in a fasted state, you will learn to thrive in that environment, and that agony that you were feeling before will go away. But you have to get through those first couple of days. So Finding comfort in someone saying, yes, you can have stevia in your fast. It's not going to hurt you. Or finding comfort in a little lemon in your water is not going to get you where you want to go. And you are going to spend months, if not years, frustrated. Ladies, we do not have time to be frustrated anymore. We can reverse these signs and signals of what we're going through that's making us so frustrated in a matter of weeks. It takes about four days to reset your hunger hormones. And then with time and consistency, you can put your body into a healing state. And then trust me, once you experience the energized sense of calm, the last thing you're ever going to want to do is put lemon in your water and ruin that feeling. The last thing that you're going to want to do is put some stevia in your coffee and rob you of the energized sense of calm. It is magic to be in a state of hungry and feel like you're in total control of how your body is feeling and what's going on inside of you chemically. You have to trust the system. This has been proven time and time again, month after month after month here in this community with women, which is why we come together to have discussions about intermittent fasting. I'm not going to sit here and quote to you all the scientific studies that say apple cider vinegar is okay, because guess what, ladies, you weren't part of that study. You were not part of the study that said stevia doesn't break a fast. You are in a completely different place of your life and that group of people who were tested are not you. If you're putting stevia in your coffee and you're still unhappy with your results, that right there should be proof enough that right now, while you're going through these struggles, stevia is breaking your fast. It should be that black and white. It should be that simple for us. And we have to stop seeking out those comfort answers that are going to make it easy for us. And then what happens is we blame the system or we blame the person when we really should be looking at ourselves and asking ourselves, why? Why is stevia so important to me in my coffee? Why is lemon in my water, the thing that's going to be the end all be all for me, when in fact it's really not because it's holding you in this place of misery. We have to go back to the basics. Why are you seeking out 
intermittent fasting as a way to solve a problem for you, whatever that problem might be. And if the way you're practicing intermittent fasting is not solving that problem, then there's no other conclusion that we can come to other than the way you're fasting is not correct for your body at this time. We have women thriving in 20 plus hour fast with nothing in their fasting window except water and black coffee. And there's a large number of women here in this community who are fasting on just water and they have reversed all of those things that were aching them and all those things that were tearing at their heart about what's happening to us as we start to age. Trust the system, trust like-minded people who are going through the same things that you're going through, who might not be at the place you are today, but were once there and are now in a completely different place because they've paved the road before you. Perimenopause and menopause and postmenopausal living should not be a torturous situation for us. It's torture mostly because we're listening to the wrong people or we're trying to cover up signs and signals and we're not trying to get rid of them. I can tell you as a 53 year old woman who has been practicing intermittent fasting for over four years now that there is no better feeling for me than a nice long clean fast. No stevia, no creamer, no nothing but a cup of black coffee and lots of water in a 20 plus hour fasting window. And that's coming from a woman who is hypoglycemic, insulin resistant, and pre-diabetic on her way to being diabetic with very, very clear signs and signals of also having Alzheimer's. This is a very serious situation. Lemon water, apple cider vinegar, stevia, creamer, all of those little niceties that you're putting in your fasting window are putting you on a track to being a sick elderly woman. We do not want that here in this community. Put in the discipline, put in the work, do a little gut check for yourself and ask yourself, why am I doing these things and are they working for me? If they are working for you, then fantastic. That's all that matters. But for the large group of us who are still suffering or a group of women who are still suffering and constantly ask that question, can I have lemon in my water? Can I have this in my fast? If you're asking the question, then clearly something is not working for you. And you have to go back to the basics, which are a nice, long, clean fast. We talk about what long fasts are here all the time. So just go back and research some of those videos. And remember, the scientific data that's out there today doesn't apply to the majority of us. We were not invited to be part of that study. So those rules and those guidelines don't apply to you. You have to consider the rules and the guidelines for a community of people who are in the same place you are and then travel down the path that they went so that they now have a different way of describing what aging means for them. I hope this helps so many of you who are feeling so frustrated and so at your wits end about intermittent fasting. We cannot fast like 20 year old bodybuilders. We cannot fast like 30 year old physique fitness models. We just can't. We can complain about it. We can cry about it. We can talk about how unfair it is, but that's not going to do us any good. We have to go back to the basics. And we have to consider where our body is today how it got there and what's working for other women that it's getting them out of that situation. And then we have to put that on rinse and repeat with time and consistency. Don't ask the questions, test it out for yourself. And if you need some support through this process, you know, I talk about it here all the time. Our intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course has healed thousands and thousands of aging women from all over the world in three short weeks. Three weeks is all it takes to be in a community of women who are going through the same exact things that you're going through to make you feel like you're not alone and there's nothing wrong with you and getting through that week of figuring out how fasting is going to best suit you and how it's going to best suit what's going on with your body. So I'm going to go ahead and open the floor for comments from our community. 
Always keep in mind that we do like to keep this as a discussion type of format here. I'm not here, like I said, to lay out scientific data that doesn't apply to us here in this community. We're here to share the facts. We're here to share what's working in our community, hopefully to encourage you to jump in with us the way we are really practicing intermittent fasting here for today's aging woman. So I'm going to jump on and welcome everybody. And if you feel like I feel you finally had your questions answered or this is making sense for you because you have been struggling and maybe you have been putting some things in your fast that might have been stalling your progress, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And um, if you have any questions about clarifying anything else with this, I would love to answer them while we are here. So Miss um, Shaja LaRue from Philadelphia is here. Amy's here. Denise from Oklahoma is here. Melinda from um, Oklahoma. Sally May grad stopped IF over holidays started again today awesome girlfriend and that's the beauty when you really get your rhythm with intermittent fasting and you've healed your body and you have a nice foundation and experience level with what it means to be in a fasted state jumping in and out is not a problem you just have to understand you have to go through those few uh, uncomfortable days in the beginning but then you just rely on that memory bank that you have built up of what the energized sense of calm is like and you'll be back there in no time for sure um, Patrice, this is my second year doing IF feeling great. Fantastic girlfriend. Zep or Carolyn, hello, I am going, um, aging woman, 61 going on 62. Yeah, fantastic for you. Hopefully you're finding some benefits from intermittent fasting or you're still in your research phase. We love having you in our community here. And Teresa, loving the IF lifestyle and feeling great. September 2018 grad and then the midlife mindset shift course now. Leanne, hello. Judy, I'm 65 and love the uh, the lifestyle November 2019 grad fantastic and a lot of our grads were a lot like some of these women here who are still questioning a lot of things and that first week of our course we really do lay down the foundation of what a clean fast means for us and why it is so important for us to really be able to reverse the signs of aging that we are not happy with remember aging should not happen the way it happens for most of us and aging is now considered a disease we want to make sure we are not affected by that disease and we are redefining what aging means for us. The only way we can do that is if we start considering some new options and then living our lives in different ways. So living our life in a different way is not listening to that outside noise of people who are not like us practicing something that we want to practice in our own way for sure. And then Michelle from Arkansas, November 2019 grad from Diane's fasting course, her methods work. I am down 80 pounds. 50 of those pounds came off just following Diane since April 2019. So there you go. She reset her hunger hormones. She reset what her insulin does in her body when she puts herself in a feasted state. And my girl lost 80 pounds, 50 of those since she was in our course in August. So you should rely on that little bit of advice there, knowing that if you're struggling, there is a better way for sure. And then Danny from October 2018 grad and current midlife mindset shift member. Great to hear this information today. Yeah, we have to have that reminder. If we start letting some things in to our fasted state, because maybe we have reached that place where we felt healed, and then we start adding stevia back in, I always say run it as a test. Anytime you start to lose those things that you felt you gained when you were fasting the way we teach it in class, then you always have to resort back to a nice, long, clean fast. Remember, when in doubt, fast it out. And if you are going to fast, make sure you are fasting and not just not eating. Remember, eating is anytime you create the sensation that there is something incoming into your system that your body is going to have to break down. Stevia is that thing. Apple cider vinegar is that thing. Lemon juice is that thing. Coffee creamer is that thing. It's creating a chemical response in your body. Prepare Your body's preparing to have to digest something. Don't let those little niceties ruin what you could have on the end if you would just put yourself into a clean fasted state. So I'm super happy that you are uh, seeing the results on that one for sure. Ellen, August 2019 grad. Jennifer, I am 24.2 pounds down. Feeling great. Jennifer, good for you, girlfriend. Amy, IF lifestyle with these rules has made sense for me for almost three years. I would much rather live a full life with IF then go back to the old set of rules, eating all the time, feeling bad. Yeah, for sure. You know, we just get that sugar, um, 
what are you, sugar, I don't want to say poisoning because that's too harsh of a word, but just those sugar, um, where sugar is running our life. And that is not a good feeling. That's when you're like this all the time. And the energized sense of calm is when you've really burned through all those glycogen stores that are readily available. And you can tap into some of that body fat. The energized sense of calm is a sustained level of energy where you're not running off those highs and lows of sugar. So your mind is calm, your emotions are calm, but your body is completely energized of what you have in storage, which you don't like having in storage. So give your body the opportunity to burn off that body fat and really energize your body. So thanks so much for sharing that, Amy. And then Zep, can you add electrolyte drops? on a fast will that break a fast it depends on what's in the electrolyte drops so you have to read the ingredients labels minerals do not break a fast so sodium potassium magnesium calcium those things are fine but make sure whatever's in that electrolyte um powder or drink or whatever you have only has minerals in it and no other flavoring flavors or additives um Melinda, as a diabetic, what fast is best for us? 16, 8, 18, 6, or 24? Um, well, if you're a diabetic, I would say refer to your physician for sure. I was pre-diabetic, 0.1 away from being a diabetic, and I fasted the way I teach in class. So the 20-hour clean fast is always the best for that situation. Jennifer, almond breeze, unsweetened coffee creamer works for me. I've tested my blood sugar, and if it doesn't, and it doesn't spike it, that may not work for everyone. I'm so glad I quit the lemon. Yeah, there you go. So she tested it. And it doesn't break her fast. But if you're not insulin sensitive, if you're insulin resistant, even the um, the taste of an unsweetened almond milk could potentially stall your burn off of sugar. So remember, we want to get ourselves in a position where we're burning off the storage of glycogen so we can tap into fat burning. So um, if you're not testing blood sugar, then assume it's going to break your fast as the, as the safest way to go for sure. Teresa, the energized sense of calm is amazing. I'm so productive when I experience it daily. It is the most amazing feeling for sure. And then Kimberly, I don't drink coffee. I wonder if matcha green tea with no stevia could be an option. Um, I would really consider uh, what's in your matcha tea uh, before I would put it in. And if you're really trying to heal your body and reverse some of these sugar-related type diseases, I would not risk matcha tea in my fast whatsoever. I would wait till I made sure that I was healed for sure. Um, and then Buenita Bishop from Michigan when in doubt, fast it out and feeling great with just water. There you go, girlfriend. And then Cleora doing now just plain warm water and is working. Awesome. Joey, black coffee, water, green tea are the only things I consume during my fast and it works. Good for you, girlfriend. And then um, Cleora um, taking a lot more water also. Yeah, for sure. You have to keep your water intake up for sure. And that's another discussion we'll have here soon about how much water you should be drinking. And then Janine from Green Bay, September 2019 grad and midlife mindset grad. Uh, I need to focus on time and consistency. Your principles work. I need to stop sabotaging myself. Excuses be gone. Yeah, for sure. And, and I really dislike the word sabotaging. And I know as women, we use it so um so easily to describe ourselves. So what I recommend is getting rid of that word and just say you're going to go back to making better choices for yourself. Making better choices is such an empowering mindset to have. Sabotaging is that thing that puts us in like a guilt and a shame type of mindset. So really try to rephrase how you're um, describing those situations that you're living in and just make better decisions. And that really does give you the freedom and the clarity in your mind to just do better for you for sure. But I feel you, girlfriend, and get yourself back on track. Um, LA laser. I've tried everything. Have diabetes, fatty liver, sleep apnea, and more. Will this work for me? Fasting with diabetes. Yes. I recommend you jumping into our course. I guide you through every step of the way, every day, what you need to do every day, how you're going to feel, why you're feeling those ways. And then we get you through those tough, questionable, um, first couple of days when you go from being super addictive and dependent on sugar to thriving without food. And it's a magical transition for sure. Um, and when you do it with a group of women, it really does help your mindset and help your confidence, uh, that this is the best thing for you. So I would highly recommend jumping into our course for sure. 
Margaret from LA, class of September 2019. Can you please talk about the power of black coffee and how powerful it is in regards to insulin? Well, coffee or caffeine um, and the um, polyphenols in coffee really do help control hunger hormones and they do help like the thermogenic effect of your body so it helps your body actually get into that fat burning type of mode so it eases those fight or flight type of responses that we have emotionally when we're in a state of hungry so that is the like simplest way to describe what coffee does for us and then it does also help us get into those fat burning modes a little faster but you cannot get into a fat burning mode or have your body burn fat and produce ketones if you have insulin present in your system so you can either be a sugar burner or a fat burner and you can't be both so if you're interrupting that fast with things that could be causing a slight insulin response you just knocked yourself out of where you want to be so um coffee for some actually does cause um a hormonal or chemical change in your body that is not advantageous. So again, if you're not experiencing the energized sense of calm in a fasted state, then I would even consider getting rid of coffee as well and just going straight water until you get yourself balanced out. Um, I've had the worst experience getting into a groove of fasting and believe it's because of coffee. Yeah, then you want to definitely make sure that you uh, ditch that. Coffee is not um, is not required to fast successfully. Coffee is what I like to call a tool. Um, and if the tool is not working for you, then you take the tool out of the shed for sure. Liberty Me, giving up cream in my coffee was tough a year ago, but now I feel better for dropping it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, creamer in your coffee is what I call a crutch. And crutches generally are the things that are going to hinder your overall success or take you so much longer to get to the success Point that you wanted and if you want to know why I know all of that because I was in your shoes if you're suffering I spent a year listening to all the advice that was given out about intermittent fasting from all the 20 year old gym men and all the 30 year old physique models and all the women who were not going through the same season of life that I was in and I was left in a year of agony and frustration and depression and disappointment because I thought I could do what they were doing that is exactly how the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman community and course came about was me becoming an expert on my own body with the season of life that, that I was in and trying fasting in a new way. And the new way that I found is exactly what we share here in this community. Um, as much as I love coffee, I think I might not be good for me. I did test my blood glucose levels before and after drinking coffee and my insulin went up. So that's all you need to know. And I would ditch it because if your insulin goes up, then you've just knocked yourself out of what we call a healing fast. I know I just answered my own question, but can you talk a little bit about black coffee? I think I talked about it enough. So if it's spiking your insulin, then you you have to ask yourself why you're relying on coffee when it's taking you away from the actual goal that you have for yourself, especially if you're suffering from the things that you said you were suffering from. And then Darlene from Georgia, February 2019 grad, frustrated with doctors who throw genetic are generic meds at me because I fit in a 50 year old template. Dice class is helping me mentally and physically as an individual woman. Yeah, there you go. Every time I go to the doctor, the look of disappointment on his or her face is always shocking when they say, what medications am I on? And I say none. And then they take my blood pressure and they're like, are you sure? And then they listen to my heart and they're like, are you sure you're not any kind of medication? And no, I'm not. I don't need to be on any medication because I'm letting my body take care of itself the way it knows how to take care of itself best and that happens for me in that fasted state for sure so yeah you have to learn how to treat your body as an individual woman for sure and then uh, brenda from north carolina this is not a quick fix but i love it i have a lot of damage to heal today was taken off today i was taken off another medication uh three more to go july august 2019 grad and i love brenda how you're tackling it one thing at a time and that's because your body is prioritizing how it's healing itself and it's taking the bigger priority items first and that's why for a lot of women they ditch the concept of intermittent fasting because they didn't lose weight fast enough. Um, and what we have to understand is our body heals on its own priority list. And I know for me, weight was the last thing where I showed um, success with intermittent fasting. My brain coming back was the first. Losing body fat was you know, in there. Getting my energy back. Getting rid of depression. All of those things happened in the exact order in which my body deemed it successful once I moved out of the way. So we have to make sure that we're uh, doing that. And Brenda, you are the poster child for that. So thank you for sharing.
sharing your success. Uh, Genevieve, um, 2019 grad from January, pan fried organic green tea keeps my state of hungry. There you go. She found something that works for her. Kathy from Colorado. I also fast with only water, black coffee, and green tea. I relaxed my eating habits over the holidays, but I'm quickly recovering and feeling great. Fantastic. And we're what? Midway through January, that's about how long it takes. So everybody's right on track. Kimberly, I was using Stevia a lot and had to cut it down quite a bit. Looking forward to cutting back more and more. Yeah, for sure. Stevia is that thing that will keep you in that sugar craving mode. Because remember, you're using Stevia to satisfy a sweet thing for you. So why is it that you're craving so much sweet stuff? And oftentimes it's because you're you're kind of in between that sugar addictive mode and trying to get your body out of it. And your body will send you those signals of craving sweet things because it wants to satisfy its addiction. So you have to go cold turkey sometimes and really ditch it and then see how your body responds from there. And then you play with it once you're healed for sure. And if you start to know you're craving um, sugary things again, it's probably because you added stevia back in. Uh, Kimberly uh, did hers. Janine, I fast 20 plus hours, no problem. I open my feasting window and all bets are off. I need to go through all my course material again and consistently apply the principles now that I know they work. Yeah, for sure. And remember, if you are um, if you feel like you're ravenous when you're opening up your feasted state, again, that's a sign that you're still in sugar burning mode and you have to get back to being that fat adapted mode. So I would go squeaky clean on your fast to get there as fast as possible. And then uh, Deanna, September grad and October mindset shift course doing good. Had 3.24 ketones today, fasted and just broke with fast uh, with protein green shake starting my four hour feasting. Well, there you go. So she was probably suffering at one point too. Now she's producing amazing ketone levels. So good for you, girlfriend. Tina, we are doing the Daniels fast at my church. Well, which I believe has strengthened my resolve for intermittent fasting. In the morning I broke this morning. I broke a 38 hour fast. The fast itself was not difficult. There you go. And then Janine, the video reminds me, remind reminders are so helpful. Diane, so motivating to hear from other women living the IF lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. We are a community that really does need to stick together because we are unique in this season of life that we are going through. And so many of us find, you know, not only the hormonal changes that we're going through so difficult to maneuver, but we have life stuff we have to deal with too. And so showing up for yourself um, the best way you can waking up every day looking and feeling your best and knowing that you're crafting your most authentic life is so important in this season putting yourself first and for a lot of us this is the first time we've had an opportunity to put ourselves first maybe your kids are gone and they're adults now and you've retired from that job that you've had and you're finding yourself in this position where you have to get to know yourself again trust me there's no better healing opportunity than being in a fasted state, empowered in that energized sense of calm and really taking the time to get to know yourself. It's fascinating. Um, it's super healing in so many different ways for a lot of us. I know for a lot of us in this community, not only are we healing medical things with intermittent fasting and the way we practice it here, but we're also healing a lot of emotional things that we've kind of stuffed down with food over the years. And really having to deal with a lot of those things has helped a lot of women as well. Um, and so make sure that you're focused on that as well. So I'm going to cut it off right there because we are th at 43 minutes into our discussion. And I really am trying to keep these down to about 30 minutes. So I'll circle back around and I'll answer any questions that maybe I didn't get to in our live broadcast. And if you're coming through on the rebroadcast, always make sure that you leave comments as well. I always go back and make sure that I address you on those as well. If you're suffering and you're confused about what to do in your fasted state, please know we do have our intermittent fasting for today's Age of Women course starting on the 1st of February. The best way to stay in the loop about what we have going on in our community behind the social media scene is to make sure that you are registered um, and um, on our email list. We really do only uh, launch our uh, intermittent fasting for today's Asian woman course and information via our email list so if you haven't already done so make sure you're subscribed there and then i will catch you guys back here on friday where michael and i will be coming on here live to talk about something related to our aging community so if you have a spouse or a significant other or a friend that you think you want to get into this lifestyle with you make sure you invite them on friday that's where we really open up this conversation to our entire community of aging people Thanks for being here with me today and make sure that the decisions that you are making for yourself today will really allow you to have the opportunity to look and feel your best and live your most authentic life. <clears throat>